Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Arias, and today we're going to be talking about Mineric, a laser communications business. We will talk about what they do, who their partners are, what their technology is, what I see as their long-term potential, as well as a crazy upside scenario that you don't want to miss. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content, and leave any video feedback and suggestions in the comments below. And without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start with what Mineric does at the most basic level, and that is develop and build laser communication systems. These systems can currently be used to communicate between satellites, between airplanes, and with both these to the ground. Long term, I am interested to see if they have developed a solution to communicate between satellites and airplanes. In terms of significant business development, they are developing multiple relationships with a variety of different companies that are in operation. Here are some of the key players, in my opinion. The first of which is Northrop Grumman. If you are not familiar with Northrop Grumman, they made the legendary B-2 and will make the future B-21 Raider, as well as just being a general military contractor, filling all sorts of different military roles. Northrop has designated Mirnarek as their strategic supplier of laser communications equipment and agreed to purchase at least $35 million of equipment over the length of their agreement. Northrop, in my opinion, will be a key customer of Muneric going forward if they are to have explosive growth because they are on the cutting edge in many ways of future technologies. They have also been selected for DARPA's Space-Based Adaptive Communications Node Program, or Space Bacon, which aims to develop rapidly configure low-cost, low-Earth orbit satellite data links. This, like the Northrop partnership, is another opportunity to find rapid expansion if they are able to demonstrate their technology can reliably fill needs. Moving on to their current production capacity, they expect to produce 50 terminals in 2021 and want to scale that to a 2000 terminal a year run rate with just their current German production facilities. They have also committed to open an R&D and production facility in the United States to further secure American national security with local production and to better tailor their offerings to specific requirements of American customers. They are currently valued at about $300 million after raising $75 million in an IPO at $16.50 a share on the NASDAQ in November. They are currently trading below that price at around $13 a share. This slide will give you a bit more context into the potential that Munera thinks their technology has. As you can see, their technology is used to communicate between satellites, both Earth Observation and Telecom, with the ground as well as between the ground and commercial aircraft and a high altitude network. You can also see both the satellites and commercial aircraft communicating with the high altitude networks, but interestingly not with each other. This is a key link that, as I said earlier, I will be keen to see if they develop a solution for or if there is some fundamental barrier that prevents this link from being possible that I don't yet understand. You'll also notice that the laser communication enables communication by radio frequency to other places that are not reachable with fiber optic cable or copper, such as cars rural and remote homes, and ships. As you can see, they envision laser communications playing an enabling role in this future network. Now that I have introduced the potential uses of laser communications, let's look at the real technological benefits that come from using laser communications. First, lasers can enable extremely high data transfer rates at at least 10 gigabits per second and possibly much greater rates, as you will see later in the product specs. These are much faster than standard LTE speeds, which is a type of radio frequency transmission. Next, laser communications are very secure compared to radio, as the beam area is drastically smaller, as you can see here. This makes it much harder to eavesdrop on laser communications. Next, laser is a license-free spectrum, whereas radio frequencies require approval in every country where they are to be used. This adds cost, takes time for approval, and limits the spectrum allowed to be used, whereas laser is free. The final advantage is a much smaller aperture than can be used for radio communications, which allows for smaller terminals with lower mass. However, there is a major drawback, and that is that a clean line of sight is needed for laser communications. Additionally, when traveling through any medium, such as air, light will become distorted over a distance losing its ability to communicate. Now let's talk about the products that Mineric has in the market currently, starting with the Condor Satellite to Satellite Communications. They currently have operational Condor Mark II terminals and are still working to bring to market the Mark III terminals. The newer Mark III has a longer range of 8,000 kilometers versus 5,000 kilometers of the Mark II and a much faster max data transfer speed of 1,000 gigabits per second, which is 80 times faster than the Mark II. However, the advantage of the Mark II is that it is fully bidirectional, meaning it can send and receive signals almost simultaneously, whereas the Mark III has to be configured to do one or the other. However, it can be switched over via software changes. These systems are of course designed for all of the challenges that come with going to and operating in space, such as the high vibrations on liftoff and the high operational temperatures and vacuum of space. Two of these terminals can be configured to run off one electronics box, which saves space. These space terminals will make up the key nodes in any communications network, as they can take advantage of the speed boost that comes with communicating in vacuums of space, as well as the increased ranges of over 10x. Moving on, let's talk about the Hawk communication system, which 
which is their air-to-air -air solution. Hawk should have a data link distance of 40 kilometers depending on operating conditions and should have a fully bidirectional data transmission rate of 10 gigabits per second. Hawk has been optimized for air-to-air -air and air-to-ground transmissions and this can be seen in the picture in the bottom right corner. It has an inertial navigation system built in which enables real-time links with other aircraft and the ground. It also, like the Condor, has no radio frequency signature from the transmission enabling secure real-time transmissions of data and images. Hawk has also been proven in real-world tests. Hawk will also clearly serve an important role in transmitting data to and from the flying nodes in the network. Finally, there are ground communications terminals, of which they are still just in the prototype stage. These will still have the same benefits as all the others, being fast, license-free, and secure. One problem to consider in having a ground terminal is weather interference. Mineric addressed this by saying that combining historical weather data and diversity of ground stations Links to satellites can be virtually guaranteed. They said a link should theoretically be able to reach all the way up to low Earth orbit and beyond. These ground stations will be a key piece of any constellation, as data will need to get up and down from these nodes to the terrestrial data connections. I would expect much of their future development work to come in this section, as it is an extremely important piece of their puzzle that they do not yet have a production product developed. Here's my biggest problem with Mineric. The need is clear for a global satellite internet network, and this is clearly has huge potential with thousands of satellites being needed to create and maintain the network. However, SpaceX, will with their Starlink is the clear leader in this market and it isn't even close. They have plans for satellites to have data links with each other, however, they already have their own integrated solution. And while Mineric has lots of ties with SpaceX, including their CEO, VP of production, and a board member, their CEO recently stated the possibility of a relationship with SpaceX is, and I quote, low. With that, there goes their biggest potential use case. However, due to their management's ties to SpaceX and their knowledge of their operations, they should know how to complement SpaceX and their position in this market and allow Mineric to grow in spite of SpaceX and Starlink's dominance in that market. However, I struggle to find the really high potential use cases that require thousands of terminals a year to be ordered from Mineric to justify the current valuation and significant upside. Finally, my conclusions. Mineric appears to have strong technology in an exploding market with a lot of potential as well as some customer relationships that give it some potential upside going forward. Before we get into what I'm doing with the stock, my craziest idea for potential upside is both the Navy and Air Force are currently working on 6th generation fighter aircraft in the Next Generation Air Dominance Program, or NGA and the FAXX program. One of the unconfirmed ideas for these weapon systems that makes a lot of sense to me is if you break it down into first principles, having many systems that all communicate with each other are commanded by one pilot. This would allow much more ammunition to be carried and allow for each aircraft to be much smaller, improving stealth, maneuverability, and cost. Each of these systems will require secure, instantaneous, high throughput communication with each other, and that's where Mineric comes in. Northrop Common will of course be connected to this fighter without a doubt, giving Mineric a foot in the door. DARPA of course will be highly involved in this development, and Mineric is already in with them as well, with the Space Bacon program. Again, this is just a crazy idea of mine and there's no substantiation behind this, but this would definitely require enough terminals to boost Mineric's valuation substantially past from a required rate of return for this investment. However, at this time, I still need to do more research and perhaps wait for a company to develop further before I'm ready to invest. Another roadblock I encounter when I go to invest in Mineric is many other companies that I love right now are on sale, so it makes it much more difficult to allocate highly speculative capital to Mineric. The main question I need to answer is what are the future costs installations that I believe will be successful that will require thousands of terminals to be ordered from Mineric. Some of the other questions I need answered are I want to know how much each terminal is going to cost to make and how much they're selling it for and what they see as the long-term future of that as production scales. I want to know what their long-term production target is for terminals in say 2030 and I also want to know if there are any first principles technical barriers to developing satellite to plane links. We should be able to determine some of these with the release of the full year 2020 report which should be coming out soon. Of course let me know if you know where I can find any of this information. Thanks for watching. What do you think of Mineric? What do you think of their future potential? Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. My goal is to get to a thousand subscribers as soon as possible, and I'd love to have you along for the ride. Thanks again for watching, and have a great rest of your day.